So in these series of videos, we're going to be discussing different uh, jujitsu submissions and in relation to that, prerequisites or things that will help uh, escape or you survive a little longer. Of course, it's always good to know the escapes and uh, I would check with your coaches. I prefer uh, Coach Henry Aikens and his series of uh, defenses and escapes from certain positions. So if you have that, the next thing is having the prerequisites in each particular submission and making sure that you have enough time. Uh, the more space I have in a joint, the more range of motion I have in a joint is gonna equate to probably a little more time to use those escapes that you might know. So that's what these this series is gonna be for and that's what the videos that we're gonna discuss and we're gonna break down certain submissions uh, and go from there and the, the main types of ranges of motion that you can work on and we'll go over a couple of stretches that I like to use for those. Um, but yeah, we'll start with that. So the first submission that I want to go over is the Americana. So typically it can be done from different positions. I like using it myself from the guard. Most people will catch it sometimes from mount, sometimes from side control. Uh, and the gist being that uh, it's a shoulder lock where I'm trying to externally rotate the person's shoulder to the point where if it goes any further, you're gonna break the shoulder itself. So in this regard, the main joint in question is gonna be the glenohumeral joint, the shoulder itself. And in particular, the range of motion of external rotation. So if I rotate back, that's going to be what elicits my me to tap. So obviously, if I only have external rotation here, I'm gonna have a lot less of a chance where my current range of motion is somewhere right in there. So it gives me a little bit more of a chance or time between when I should tap or not. So the idea here, the more range of motion I have, the better. So from a functional range perspective, in relation to the to the shoulder, the glenohumeral joint, we want to work the deepest stuff first, and in that regard, it's going to be external rotation, which is what we need, and internal rotation. But if for this particular submission, the one that we're most interested in is external rotation. So the more space I can get through there, the better. Two things that I like to recommend to folks when I'm working on them is number one, movement throughout the day. So in the functional range perspective, we have the cars. If I'm moving through my shoulder, I'm gonna move my shoulder through its complete range of motion as much as I can throughout the day. Basically greasing the groove, getting some lubrication inside that joint, getting some movement, some synovial fluid getting as much movement as possible will kind of keep that space open and over time start to create some space as well. The other one more particularly, even for this one, is just working on my capsular car. So I'm just gonna isolate external rotation, moving in into internal rotation and extra rotation as much as I can throughout the day. The second exercise I like to recommend is just passive stretching. Uh, there's many different ways to do it. Uh, the one that I like to show folks most often is from a kneeling position. And I'm going to take a stool or something and I'm gonna to try to bring my shoulder in line with my elbow and then try to stretch it up. In most cases, I'm gonna be using a dowel or you can use a wall, something of that nature. But basically, in this case, if I'm using the dowel, I'm gonna walk my hand up. 
until I start feeling a stretch. If this movement is particularly tight, you want to stretch as often as possible. Uh, what I would usually recommend to folks is two to three times a day, and we're working towards two minutes. That longer hold is gonna take that longer hold to actually start changing that tissue. And we have to do it repeatedly. So we usually use the acronym, the GOAT, the greatest of all time. If you know you have really tight shoulders, and in particular, no external rotation, it would make a behoove you to move into that, to stretch that as much as possible using those two strategies, either both actually, the movement, the capsular cars and the cars, and those long uh, stretches. And I would be doing those every day, daily, especially if it's a place of issue. Once we get into a more kind of maintenance position, I like doing it once a week. So getting a good whole long stretch. And if you follow other functional range systems, that stretching is just the beginning, but this is where we start to work uh, some of those strategies. Of course, to open more range, we're gonna move into other exercises. And you can check those out uh, <clears throat> by following other folks. I have a whole video subset that I go through this and which would involve some other exercises to continue to open up space. One last note with this is say I'm moving into range of motion or I'm getting into that stretch and I'm starting to feel pain at any part of the range of motion. This could be conducive of uh, a closing angle joint pain. Basically there's no space in the joint which is not allowing you to move. And in those cases, I would try to stay out of that pain, continue doing those exercises. Stretching might not be uh, available, but you can still move in those painless ranges. So if I'm going and it kind of hurts here, just staying right outside, but getting movement throughout that joint. I would recommend seeking a practitioner who is able to work on that joint space and try to open it along with other exercises that we do in functional range conditioning to try to open that space up and try to prepare the joint. And again, the big end all thing is building those prerequisites, having the necessary capabilities in my shoulder, in this particular, to survive a little longer. So again, this one was external rotation, maybe my recona.